So I want to talk to you about the creative process and how products are designed. But I'm not just going to show you a bunch of glossy finished renderings and really nicely curated sketches. We're going to get really down to the nitty gritty details. I'm going to talk about everything that went wrong in this process. I'm going to show you the little crappy napkin sketches that I did. I'm going to show you the discussions that I had with the manufacturer. And we're going to talk about every single detail along the way. So for this project, I really wanted to rethink the bass guitar. When one of the people that I interviewed named Adam was playing shows three times a week, he was feeling intense pain in his wrists. He was at a point where surgery to treat his carpal tunnel syndrome was a very real possibility. I'm sure that you've had an experience where you have an idea or thought in your head, but you can't quite express it. You can't quite find the words for it. That's really frustrating and that's how musicians feel when they can't quite play their instrument properly because it's uncomfortable or it's sort of holding them back. Just for some backstory, Fender guitars absolutely dominated the market and they still do to a large extent. That's been the case for about 60 years now. The Fender bass guitar was a huge improvement over you know, existing double basses, which were huge and unwieldy, very uncomfortable. But a lot of the design has been optimized for manufacturing efficiency and cost rather than actual usability. And the result of that is that really, these instruments are not the most comfortable to use. This is a Music Man Stingray. It's been in production since the late 70s. I'm having to kind of bend my wrist quite a bit. And this body is just really massive. If I can keep the instrument in this position while keeping everything else sort of flat and straight in the rest of my body, that is the ideal. Now, for the purists who are diehard Fender fans, diehard Gibson fans, this is not going to be for you, okay? I understand that you love these instruments and I understand the nostalgia and cultural heritage that's attached to them, but I think that it's time to move on and try something a little bit different. Ultimately, this design needs to be visually striking. Because it's so different, if I just do this super ergonomic design that looks really boring, nobody's gonna pick it up and play it. It's okay if a lot of people really hate this design. All I need is for a few people to really love it. By the way, I'm launching a course that will show you how you can do your own design work just like this. I'll teach you how to apply industrial design principles like form, design language, and visual storytelling to your own work. I'm giving the discounted price to people on a first come, first serve basis, so click the link in the description to be the first to get notified. One of the most important things before you start any creative project is the design goal. So more specifically, what do you hope to solve with this object or design? Based on a lot of testing with several users, I basically simplified the design goal down to two simple sentences. The only limit to your playing is your imagination. This instrument must be an extension of your mind and your body. It's really important to have this design goal in mind because it's ultimately going to make it easier to make good design decisions. Anything that's not in service of the design goal, whether it's a feature or a detail, can be taken out. Anything that is in service of that design goal, of course, should be left in. There were a whole bunch of other subcategories that I focused on that were a lot more measurable and tangible in terms of product requirements, but they all laddered up to that one goal. While having a design goal definitely does not guarantee success, not having a design goal almost guarantees failure. So I started cutting up some concepts out of pink foam and I didn't worry too much about body contours or details. I didn't care about aesthetics or proportion. I was just focused on coming up with a shape that's comfortable. With that in mind, I wanted to design a base that was absolutely ideal for the classical position. Basically, the classical position is when you hold the base on your left leg if you're right-handed. It's just a better way to hold the instrument, in my opinion. A certain subset of people do hold the instrument this way, but really, a majority of people do not. So this meant that I basically needed to design an instrument that accommodated both of those people. So the key visual cues I'm trying to achieve with this design are comfort, balance, seamless, and striking. Those were the four words that I came up with that were based on the research. If you remember from all of those foam models, I basically just cut a bunch of foam until it felt comfortable. From there, I'm basically figuring out, okay, how do I make this crazy amorphous piece of foam that is comfortable actually 
look good? How do I make it look comfortable, balanced, seamless, and striking? Now we can evaluate some of the sketches that we did and see how they sort of measure up against this criteria. So to be clear, these are not great sketches and that's okay. For now, I'm just focused on getting ideas out. Normally, I wouldn't show these low fidelity sketches to anyone else. I'd basically just sort of keep them to myself. So if we look at this first set of gymnastics inspired thumbnails, I think the ones where the holes are on the inside of the object feel a lot more seamless because they can more easily flow with the rest of the silhouette. We can see some slightly more refined sketches now. I think that there are some interesting ideas here and that's why I've starred them, but I don't think many of them feel seamless. Onto the next set of these quick thumbnails. I was trying to come up with something that felt strong and sturdy as if it was this really well-constructed solid piece of wood. And I think that many of these concepts feel balanced and striking, but I'm not sure how comfortable they look with all of the hard angles and how bulky they are. For the next page, we have a series of thumbnails that draw inspiration from various plants and flowers. So overall, there are some interesting ideas in here, especially in the bottom left, but it just doesn't look especially comfortable. It needs refinement. I also think that it would be really hard to construct a base this way using bent plywood. One major part of the design criteria was that I needed to be able to construct the design using rapid manufacturing methods like CNC and laser cutting. It may not be possible to make under the constraints I have for this project. So I've taken some of my favorite sketches or the ones that are most in line with the use case and basically expanded on them. I'm going a little bit more in depth in these next couple of pages. In my opinion, these are sort of borderline in terms of quality. I probably still wouldn't show this level of sketch to a client. It would maybe need to be like one step up from this, but you can maybe show it to your boss, assuming he or she is a design director or has a design background. You could do that. So on the first page, I really like a lot of the proportions of these, but I don't think they feel very comfortable or balanced or seamless yet. The shapes are very abruptly broken into two different pieces. If you're trying to communicate comfort and balance, that doesn't communicate that. That's not the way to go. So the first thing you'll notice when we go to page two is that I chose to draw over my old sketches. So when you're designing, you want to be fast and efficient. There's no point in redrawing a bunch of different perspective angles over and over again. Back to the actual sketches themselves. I think there are similar problems with the second page of sketches. I think it's just a bit too fragmented. It does feel very lightweight because I've broken up all of these shapes and took away any unnecessary volume visually but it just doesn't really communicate comfort to me. Okay, so this is where things got really weird, and I think this was actually a big breakthrough for the project. After I got feedback from some of the other designers in my Discord, I thought more about how to communicate this idea of seamless comfort. There were two aspects of it. I remember the T-1000 in the movie Terminator 2. He was this horrifying villain that could shapeshift into anything. And one thing that really struck me about the T-1000 was the way that it morphed and shapeshifted at the end of the movie. But that sort of visual story and design language easily translates over to a product that emphasizes comfort and seamlessness. Honestly, in my opinion, these sketches are way too wild to be usable, but this is a great example of how you can find inspiration from anywhere. When you see something cool, always take a mental note of it or take a picture of it or something, or just try to document it. Even if it doesn't apply to anything that you're doing right in that moment, it'll probably come in handy later. The second major area of inspiration for this design was through this picture that I took of this rock. So I learned that these holes come from mollusks that slowly burrow into the rocks over a period of several years. I thought that the connection between a mollusk anchoring itself onto a rock and a musician anchoring him or herself onto the edge of this design feature for stability was a really compelling visual story. This sketch is really, really unusual. This cutaway is really interesting and when I actually tried to sketch it out, it didn't look that good and it wasn't gonna work proportionally. I even built a model to test it out because I was so excited about it, but it, it just wasn't meant to be. So instead, I took that same concept where you cut big chunks out of the design, but only applied it to the bottom of the design. That's what these little holes are here, almost like exhaust vents or something. Then I took that same idea, merged it with the liquid metal T-1000 Terminator idea, and I ended up with these sketches. Quick note, these are sketches of the back of the bass guitar. All the other sketches are the front where basically it's the part that's facing out towards the audience while you play. 
Most of the contours in these sketches are informed by ergonomics, but I wanted to sort of blend them all together by making these fluid, seamless lines that rippled through the silhouette. I'm still not 100% sure where this design is going, but I'm on my way to coming up with a design that's comfortable, seamless, striking, and balanced. Next, it was time to work out all this stuff in CAD. For something so organic like this, Rhino subdivisional modeling was probably the best choice. The main disadvantage of sub-D modeling in Rhino is that it's really, really hard to get controlled Class A surfacing. This design was also going to be CNC'd from wood, and it would be sanded by hand using probably an orbital sander. So the precision in surfacing was not quite as important. One thing that I want to mention is that I went through several iterations using sub-D modeling in Rhino over the course of about two weeks. I got lots of feedback from people on the Discord chat at all steps along the process. And I made sure to tell them what I was trying to express in the design, and they graciously gave me some advice and critique. It's ultimately up to you, the designer, to decide what kind of feedback you're going to listen to or not listen to, but it always helps to get a second opinion. The most important thing to remember is that whatever decision you make with your design, just make sure that you're able to defend it based on your research and the use case. Another thing that was really important was to get full scale printouts of the design. These are one-to-one -one scale and they help me a little bit with ergonomics and they also give me a good sense of proportion. It's really, really hard to tell what the proportions will look like in the computer, so it's just good for a gut check. So I took a lot of inspiration from things that you'd find in nature. And because of that, the design actually looks very Art Nouveau, which was a movement in the late 1800s, early 1900s. The dynamic movement that you see in these pieces is really beautiful, and I'm definitely trying to channel some of that in this design. One of the hallmarks of the Art Nouveau style are these whiplash curves. And sure enough, completely by accident, one of the most distinctive elements in my design is that same whiplash curve that you'd see in Art Nouveau pieces. I thought that was a really beautiful sort of visual expression, and I feel like it's really appropriate for a musical instrument because it is such an expressive product. You need to be aware of the cultural and visual context that you're working within. Otherwise, you run the risk of creating some very, very unwanted visual connections. Anytime you come up with something new, people will compare it to other things that they've seen. It's just natural. So as you can obviously see here, this is a really, really organic form, right? So one way to sort of ground it a little bit was to make these pieces that sort of branch off from the main body a little bit more straight, a little bit less blobby. So like you have the neck, which is super, super geometric, right? And then you have each of these two horns that stick out that are also quite geometric. I also tried a lot of different experiments with different neck profiles. So I basically took existing necks from other bass guitars and just started sanding them down into different shapes. What I was trying to achieve with this sort of like offset V shape that's kind of asymmetrical is that I wanted to basically have a place to rest my thumb in two different places. It allows you to sort of uh, plant your thumb down here on the back side of the neck and also it allows you to plant it up here. It's really important to note that neck profile is extremely subjective, but this seemed to work well with the people that I tested it with and with myself. I, I like this profile a lot. I also created a bill of material, so I knew every single part that went into this design, as well as how much it was going to cost. I talk about the part name, the number of parts, how much it's gonna cost per unit, the total cost, additional notes, all this kind of stuff is really, really important when you're planning a more complex assembly like this. So big shout out to Two Cherries Instruments for doing the CNC work on this build. Go check out Two Cherries Instruments on YouTube. They have a ton of great instructional videos on CNC and guitars and other guitar related projects. So this is the latest prototype that I've received from Two Cherries Instruments. I think one important thing to mention is the back and forth conversation that happens between the designer and the manufacturer. Obviously, this is for a much smaller run of products, but really whether it is just a couple of bass guitars or millions of units of whatever widget that you're designing, the process is somewhat similar. Usually there's a bit of a back and forth in terms of what is feasible and what the manufacturer is able to do. If the manufacturer is good, they'll actually point out any errors or issues with your files and help you to fix them before they go into production. So here's an example of a back and forth conversation that happened between myself and James of Two Cherries Instruments. 
He showed me that the neck pocket, which is where the area where the neck fits into the body right here, had a bit of a draft angle to it. So normally you want a draft angle in any sort of mold making process so that the part can easily release from the mold and not get stuck. But because this is CNC'd, that kind of a draft angle would have created stepping in the surface. So instead, the design needed to have walls that were perfect 90 degree angles. Right now it fits in really, really well. But one thing I noticed was that in the 3D model, the base had completely rounded edges and the hole around the bevel looked different in the prototype compared to what I modeled in 3D. So the details were slightly different from my design intent, and this is very, very common in manufacturing. The first part you get is almost never right. So I spoke with James about it, and he basically told me that it was because the ball end mill bit that he was using was too big to fit those features in. So he had to carve certain parts by hand. For the final design, he's gonna order a small ball end mill that will allow him to get those tighter contours. This is not James's fault. I told him specifically to prioritize speed over precision because this is just a prototype. That's totally okay. But it's important to be aware of these little issues that will pop up between the manufacturer and yourself. There were quite a few issues with the design that I didn't notice when it was a 3D CAD model. This is just a fact of translating things from the computer into reality. I actually took several little notes and actually drew directly on the body to show where I'm going to make the changes for the next round of revisions. Overall, I'm quite happy with the work that my manufacturer did and I would work with them again 100%. So I know that this is a bit of an odd camera angle, but I wanted to just show you this really quickly. I can literally just sort of plop this down on my lap and it just fits. I don't have to do anything else. I don't have to move my legs. I don't have to do anything weird. It just fits and works. And I just sort of place my hand here. No bending, nothing awkward. This is just really nice and comfortable. It's a very comfortable, neutral body position. And this thing just works. It's beautiful. I'd want to test it out with a bunch of other users, but based on the couple of user tests that I've done, the results look really promising. All right, everyone, I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe, it's free, it helps me out. You can always unsubscribe later if you change your mind. Don't forget to smash that like button like it insulted your mother. Be sure to check out the link in the description to sign up for my online industrial design course. Last, but certainly not least, Big shout out to Two Sherry's Instruments for helping me make such a great bass guitar. I had a lot of fun working with James of Two Cherries, so be sure to go check out his channel and have a great day.